got you, baby turtle. It's, no, don't get away. Goodness. You guys want to try some honey from my last removal? He has fresh honey. Oh, look at the fresh honey. Egyptian goose pear down. Okay, I see him. I don't see any heads though. Till he turns. Hit them in. They're feeding. Hang on. Jermaine, okay. make a noise. I got one. I got one. Jermaine, make a noise. Kaka. Kaka. He's a kaka. Well, this has 70 foot pounds of energy. You think that'll just drop him with a body shot? Yes. Oh, with a body. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Closer to the chest. Mm. Holy cow. Goodness. He's dead. All right. Jessica just put me on my first Egyptian goose. Now maybe if I were lucky enough, I'll, I'll stumble and fall over this guardrail again. <laughs> I went, I really did. I went head over heels right on my face on it. <laughs> Try not to. Notice all the iguana holes we're gonna see as oh, we're yeah. going right One, here. Two, three, this is four. typical iguana damage along a canal. And you can see the iguanas right there. And the holes and the tail drag marks. So this is no doubt iguana holes. There's iguanas all along the canal. More holes. The city has to put in these concrete embankments so that it doesn't uh, undermine the actual road. And if you look, it's hollow under them because the iguanas still dig underneath it oh, wow. yeah. like oh, this. Yeah. You can stick your finger right And down. then it's still not helping. So this will still get undermined and they will still cause cracks in the road soon enough. Look, this is where the road's already collapsing from the iguanas and they enter these holes. Stick my hand too far down. I will. Yeah. Oh, you're crazy. Look, oh my God. it's all sand. <laughs> See, I can reach all the way in all directions. And it's all sand, so they just dig it right out. And it's hollow all down in here. You can see in all the holes. We're going to retrieve the first Egyptian goose. Oh, baby turtle. He just went under the water right there. He's moving under the mud. Oh, I see it. I'm shot. tempted like to get him. The green one, the little green one, right? No, there's a second one right oh, really? here. Oh, Hang I don't on. see him then. Hang on, I'm catching. Are you really? Hold on. <sighs> Jessica, going f full native. You got a baby turtle. Hang on. That's right. There. Baby oh, turtle. Wow. Got you, baby turtle. It's, no, don't get away. Goodness. Oh, he's feisty. Oh, look how pretty, y'all. I don't even know the species, but it's not a red ear slider. Look at all the nice yellow on him. I don't know. It's not a painted. There's like a chicken turtle, and there's some um, other kinds of sliders. If you know the type of turtle, let Steve know what he is in the comments. Let's see if we can show the full shell. Oh, he's got some little ridges on his back and everything. Isn't he nice? Yeah. Show the belly markings. Y'all ID this turtle for us. <laughs> Get in his face. Got you, little turtle. Let's let him go. Here he goes. Oh, he tumbled Heck in. Heck in. <laughs> I just asked, and I'm like, there's no way an alligator could be in this water because it's not connected to the Everglades. And Jessica's like, uh, no. no. There's absolutely a possibility there's an alligator in here. Last year, I caught an alligator. It was only like three and a half feet, but I caught an alligator in a rocky pond that was man-made, not connected to anything. And it was in a very secure walled property. Um, I'm not gonna name the client because they'd appreciate it, but <laughs> it, it's amazing that the alligator was even in there. So I don't doubt in these open canals that we could uh, run into alligators. I've seen a number of alligators, not in ones this far in the city, but 
yeah, we get lots of alligators out here, and we're very close to the Everglades. We're, we're, you realize we drove really far west to get right where we're at. Uh, I don't so really have any idea I where think, we are. I think that we're about 15 minutes from the Everglades right now if we just continue west. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so we're very close to the Everglades and very reasonable that an alligator could come up one of the pipes or canals and make its way over here wandering around. Nice. So, we'll nice. be careful while we retrieve our goose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Steve gets to grab the goose. Your goose should be right about here, huh? Right here, I see it right here. So are these geese, like is this an adult size? This is an adult goose. They uh, pair up. They're normally an ornamental goose. This is something people brought into their yards to be pretty, because they are. Look at him, he's gorgeous. They even get iridescent on their wings here, if you look. Oh, I gotta... Sticker. Oh, there's stickers all in this grass. That's what type of grass we're in right okay. now. So they get this fantastic iridescence to their wings back here that these oh, feathers yeah, are I really see. gorgeous. You see it? Yeah, yeah. Just a really pretty goose. They almost are like a spectacle goose with that circle around their eye. Mm -hmm. They pair up and are very aggressive. The reason that they're invasive in Florida. Oh, look at that. It spurs on them is that they do they call i didn't a, know that i don't know i'm shocked too anybody ever noticed that before because i think the egyptian geese have so usually water i mean usually fowl have you know a spur yeah. on their leg but that's not this these aren't spurred because i know there's a thing called a spur wing goose oh really yeah i don't know if i never seen uh, this before that's like a different name but yeah right there got, got you goose Going to pick up the counterpart goose, the second part of the pair. Got you, goose. So we got goose number two. Egyptian goose pair down. Eradicated. I like it. Let's hear it. Got you, goose. Got you, goose. <laughs> What we have oh. here, which you guys may want to check out. You guys want to try some honey from my last removal? He has fresh honey. I'm jealous. It's stuck together from all the honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the fresh honey wow. and the larva from the yeah, bees. There's all larva, honey here. Talk to us. Are there any of the queen hive So spots? no queen, but here, this is what we actually do have the colony. Look, there's right a here. bee still on it. There's yeah, yeah. Bees, but that's a whole box of bees right here. Look at the box of bees, y'all. They're doing oh, bee things. Wow. Yes. And so those are all girls? Because yes. all the bees are girls? Okay. Unless you have a drone? There are no drones actually here. There was a couple of drones on the entrance to the colony. Um, and that's really uh, indicative of a swarming season, actually, which is really cool. So we're coming into spring right now. And we're going to get this huge nectar flow, which is going to be, you know, right here this is like you know what you're looking at this is 100 percent pure legit like straight out of fort lauderdale international airport oh my god out of the airport it's so nice. <laughs> you know, it's like a legit fresh, airport here it's a little honey. old wax but it's still it's still very flavorful real juicy stuff yeah. you know but feel free to bite into it yeah 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 no worries what you think that's so, some of the best honey I've ever, I don't even yeah, like honey. Yeah, no, that's wow. really good. It's just, you know what, man? It's straight from the colony to your mouth. It hasn't it's touched really anything. It's really good. You know, no, oh uh, Do you know. you know what plants they might have pulled this from? Because I'm from Louisiana, so, and the guy used to make honey and, well, you know, put his bees out, mm -hmm. and it was swamp tupelo honey, or it was white clover honey. So right here, um, I believe that we're going to be getting some, not only red mangrove here, but we're going to get leftovers from Brazilian pepper. And we're also which going is an invasive to, species. Yes, it is, but it actually has become one of the primary nectar blooms. It's gonna get a little more honey. Okay. Beekeepers. <laughs> okay. This is All right. Really good. What's really cool about it is, is here in South Florida specifically, we have such a large, dense population of Brazilian pepper, even with the removals that we are going yes. through, um, that beekeepers from all over the nation, especially New York send their bees down here to Florida for overwintering from November to January, just before the almond blossom. Okay. What? So okay. this invasive species has had the opportunity to help facilitate the bees here in the States. But isn't that counterproductive towards trying to stop the spread of the Brazilian pepper because now you're pollinating the flowers and creating seeds? So yes and no, but this is so, the, although Brazilian peppers are 
wildly invasive. If you do keep them in a manageable location, you can still have a very fruitful nectar form, okay? Which is more important to me than the negative impacts that Brazilian pepper is gonna have on our ecosystem in a sense. Not saying that I advocate for, you know, invasive species of any sort, especially plant life. It's just that Brazilian pepper does provide a huge and quite abundant, not only nectar flow, but food sources for deer, wild boar, and all sorts of other animals that we have down here in Florida, especially if you're a hunter, you know, that's that's gold right there. That's really awesome that it's able to yeah. contribute to a part of the economy and for people like that.